first point, and what I brought up here, guys, is as we talked about with this, is if I have x equals 1 plus i squared of 2, we know that the conjugate pair has to exist, x equals 1 minus i squared of 2, right? And if we know that one of these is a 0, so x equals 1 plus i square root of 2, then we know we can write this as a factor, right? To write it as a factor, just basically setting it equal to 0. This is what I've showed in the, another one, but because I feel like showing all my steps, I'm going to show all the steps. So therefore, I have x minus 1 minus i squared of 2 is one factor, right? And therefore, if we have the other 0, we can figure out the other factor, correct? So therefore, we have, let me write them over here, x minus 1 minus i squared of 2 is one factor times x minus 1 plus i squared of 2 is the other factor. So if you were to obviously solve this one for 0, you'd get these two factors. Now, does this times this give you your function f of x? Does this times this give you x to the fourth? No, there's only one x there. x times x is going to give you an x squared, right? So that means this times this times something else equals f of x. Correct? So what we need to do then is figure out what is that something else. So what we can do here is if you guys think about this in division, if we could multiply these two and then take f of x and divide it by that product, the first thing we got to do is we got to multiply these. Correct? Now I already showed you guys the box method, right? You guys could just set these up as a, you know, a box method and multiply them out. However, I want you guys to recognize some things. And this is only a shortcut if you're pretty good with your multiplying numbers. But it is a nice shortcut. So rather than doing the box method, which you guys could do, and again, if you don't get this method, just go to the box method. It's fine. But what I want you guys to recognize is you can group these first two terms. And then what you guys see, it's just like the difference of two squares. Your first two terms are the same, and your last two terms are the same, but it's plus or minus. So rather than doing distributive property like you have to do here, you can just square the first two terms and square the last two terms and take the difference. So therefore, this is x minus 1 squared. Now here, you've got to be able to determine what is i square root of 2 squared. So basically, I have i squared of 2 squared. Well, i squared is i squared. Square root of 2 squared is 2. i squared is? Negative 1. Now again, I, so you have the, um, so it's minus negative 2, right? Which is really essentially the same thing as plus 2. And then again, that's times something equals f of x. Now can we expand x minus 1 squared? And this is where the, tra this is where the help is. Yes, you should be able to expand this. So, so therefore, I finally have x squared minus 2x plus 3, which I'm going to write, okay? And I'm going to divide that. I'm going to divide that into f of x, which is 2x to the fourth minus 7x cubed plus 13x squared minus 11x plus 3. Because when I divide this into that, right, you divide this into that, you're going to get your other factor. So let's see what we get here. x squared divides into 2x squared. Ooh, here's your long division example. You asked for it, so probably no into that one. You always take your first term, divide into that. x squared divides into 2x squared, 2x squared times. Then you multiply the 2x squared times x squared, which is 2x to the fourth. 2x squared times negative 2x, which is going to be a negative 4x cubed. And then you do 2x times 3, which is a positive 6x squared. Then you use parentheses, subtract the rows. You can just bring these terms down. Subtract the rows. 2x to the fourth minus 2x to the fourth is 0x to the fourth, which we'll just write as 0. Seven, negative 7x squared minus a negative 4x is going to be a negative 3x cubed. 13x squared minus 6x squared is going to be a positive 7x squared. And then we have negative 11x and then positive 3. OK, so that was the first round. Now let's do the second round. You're not writing this down. No. 
Actually, do I use it? Because I first turn to the first turn, they just drew you that to the rest of the yep. turn. Mm -hmm. So let's do it again. x squared divides into negative 3x squared negative 3 times. Negative 3x times, sorry. So now, negative 3x times x squared is negative 3x cubed. Negative 3x times a negative 2x is going to be a positive 6x squared. Negative 3x times a positive 3 is going to be a negative 9x. And again, subtract your rows. Because don't you think this would be like a great example to have like on a cheat sheet? I mean, I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. I mean, <laughs> negative 3x minus a, a minus a negative 3x is again going to 0. 7x squared minus 6x squared is just x squared. 11, a negative 11x minus negative 9x is going to be a negative 2x. And then I could just bring down the 3. All right, Whew. last round. How many times does x squared divide into x squared? One. One times x squared is x squared. One times negative 2x is a negative 2x. One times 3 is a positive 3. Subtract my rows, and I get a remainder of 0. So what that means is this times 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals f of x. So what does that tell us about this? It's a factor. It's a factor of the polynomial. So that means from the factor, I can set it equal to 0 to find the zeros, right? Should I automatically just go to the quadratic formula because it has a 2 in front of it, or should I try to factor it? Let's try to factor it. Let's see. So we take our factor, 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals 0, and say, well, I know that these ones are fairly basic. So I need them to give me a positive 1, but oh man, they need to give me a negative, right? So therefore, both my terms should both be negative, negative or they have to be negative. Does that work? Did I have any other options? No, that's it. I didn't even have to think about it. Like, that's it. So therefore, my zeros are going to be, now I would set these equal to 0. And you have 1, 1 half. And then 1, 1 half, and um, what are these? 1 plus or minus i squared of 2. 